This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito, give it a go with Azito. Refresh Pure Water. And Reading Cinemas, experience the difference. Hello Australia, hello New Zealand, welcome to The Couch episode 493. We have got the biggest couch ever. You ask why? Well, check it out for yourself. On the show today, this is on. We've got Clay and uh, Paula doing music, as always, all the latest news. Can't wait for that. Later on, we talk travel with our very own Steve Collins from Radio Roaming. The bitches are back to talk all great topics that are making news around Australia and the world. And one of my favourite art, local artists, Shamim. We introduce her and she performs her brand new album. And, oh, not album, we'd love to have the album. And we play Spin It to win it as well. It is such a big couch. Hope you can stick, along, stick around, stick along. Here it is. It's showtime on the couch. Showtime on the couch You can see it from your house You can watch it from your house It's showtime on the couch With Fred eh, eh, eh. And the best in town Oh, it's showtime on the couch And just a reminder, of course, for all your friends, tell them to watch The Couch online, thecouch.com.au, if you haven't already done so. For those people who don't have uh, Face TV or Foxtel as well. To open the show today, I said she was a wonderful talent. She still is. She's waiting centre stage to perform for us from her new album that's coming out in January next year. But you can still buy this on iTunes right now. If you love it, it's called Beautiful Soul. Please welcome Shamine. Every boy and every girl born with such a beautiful soul is taught ugliness in this world. Haven't you heard? Oh, haven't you heard? Such an innocent creature born into this life. Carries no preconceptions, no wrongs. But we teach them to be cautious of the other, not to just trust and love of one another. It's dangerous, we say. Every boy and every girl born with such a beautiful soul is taught ugliness in this world. Haven't you heard? Oh, it's so 
fantastic local talent. Her name is Shamim, and you're going to meet her after the break. So please stick around for that. And for those people who don't recognise the voice, remember the ad for Clean Heat Gas here in WA? Turn it on. Turn it. No, it's turn it up. <laughs> turn it up. That's probably why you don't remember it, but you will remember her when she comes on after the break. Thank you for you two for laughing. Every Moral week. support Every from week. Paula and Clay, of course. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Gilda. Ten It's so nice to have you back. Thanks for having us. Good we to love be back. Here. And you're such great singers, of course. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about today? We had a busy week today. We were yeah, about... so um, the first part we're talking about is the voice. So oh. last week, the voice. How about the ratings plummeted for that? They Apparently, they have. Oh, well, wow. what's, what do you reckon caused that? The first season was the best season. What did I tell you? <laughs> wow, that's simple. And they pay millions for people to tell them they these things. They do, yeah. Well, see, so the winner was Anya yep. Nissen, and she. She could sing. She was beautiful, absolutely great singer. Do you remember what she sang? No. Uh, oh. Right, you watched But she could sing. She had a beautiful voice. However, like, she was okay. supposed to release her debut single and it was written by Delta Goodrum called My Girls. They scrapped that the day before it was supposed to happen. Really? Yep. So usually when it comes, like, when the series finishes, the winner gets to release their original song. They scrapped it the day before it was supposed to go out. And oh, wow. she's gone with... A Will I Am pen song, so Why you kind of have to wait. Do you reckon they do it to sell? It's all about well, selling. Well, you got to pick. You're going to have a Delta Goodrum song or a Will I Am song. Who will you go with? I'd probably go for Will I Am as well. Well, he's more international. Well, he's got to reach. I mean, Delta might have worked. The, the, the Delta song can Delta write wrote. beautiful songs. You've got to remember, you're selling it to an Australian market, That's also right. internationally, but Australians yeah. would have gone with uh, Delta. Well, I she reckon. ended up being signed by Will I Am's label as well, exactly. so you kind of just do what you're told in those it's sort of shows. It's all about the money. That's all it is about. Mm. Anything else about the voice that you care to remember, or you don't remember much? Oh, like, I still enjoy the show. It's a great concept that gives artists uh, a platform to stand on mm. and, you know, opportunities. We all can't be. Too bad. Well, we're about enjoying it. watching that um, voice kids. Yes, yeah. I think that's done that. very well as well. Yes, the voice kids. So I've, I've enjoyed that part of it. Some of those th kids are going to do me out of a job too. By I way. think what it is, <laughs> if something's original, it seems to work mm. really well for a couple yep. of years. But then if you overkill it, yeah. you've got to let it go for a while. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You know, and I, and I think the X factor will go that way as well, for some reason. Yeah, we'll mm. soon have see how that goes. Fair enough. What else have we got? Outcast. A couple of months ago, um, don't know if you remember us talking about. Outcasts reuniting for a show mm -hmm. at the Splendor, in, Splendor the in the Green. Well, the reviews have come through, and these guys have just gone strength to strength. Apparently, they did a great show. It was awesome. They had the back. audience in the palm of their hands for the whole two-hour show, um, and it was to the point where at festivals, you know, you always just have people mm. milling around in the front. They actually filled the side of the stage yeah. so that they could get close to see. see them. The only thing I remember about Outcast was the sorry, Miss Jackson. Jackson. <laughs> I can't see a singing career with you two as backing artists. <laughs> people have now forgotten Outcast. Tony Braxton, what's happening with okay, her with Babyface? So it's Tony Braxton, Babyface, Baby and Mariah Carey. These are just rumours that they're um, set to do a couple of concerts in New Zealand in November. Mm -hmm. um, We're hoping it's true because that would be couple? really cool. Wow. Well, who knows? At the moment, it just came they're through. They're big on. names. I mean, Mariah's. Heralded as the yeah. best of the millennium, you know. Well, pretty much. And it's like going to little New Zealand. I wonder if they're going to go anywhere else. That's that's what the rumour is, that they were only going to go to New Zealand. But Really? Yeah, we're... Is there a reason why they've got the affection for New Zealand and not maybe Australia? It's because we're pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Laid back. Probably Laid back, just like Really singing. good singers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Turn it up. Turn it up. <laughs> Sammy J. What's Sammy happening Sammy J is a... Um, Bloody good singer. Pop, bloody good singer from yep. New Zealand. Um, and he's, he's based coming, in Brisbane. He's based in Brisbane, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. Mm. And he's coming to Perth for, a first, for his first show. Yes. On the 23rd of August. What's so special about him? Why is he so good? He was a YouTube sensation. Okay. So they discovered him via YouTube. So, you know, when we have those singers at home thinking, oh, I'll just put a video up, you never know who's watching. And he's like, the happened absolute, to be caught up. Yeah, one of those people that success has found him so via YouTube. There are many amazing New Zealanders that do so well in Australia and around the world as yeah. well, don't they? And so he's going to do a show here August 23rd, and he's got like two of the best Perth. Um, support acts. He's got uh, Sarah Capo, mm -hmm. who is an amazing MC hip MC hop, hip -hop artist in, in Perth circuits, and Box Party. Now, if you haven't heard of Box Party, where have you been? <laughs> um, Box Party's us. <laughs> <laughs> We've been told um, very quickly. We've got 30 seconds. Te Wiki yes. and Stan Walker. Tell us quickly yes, about so, that. Yes. Um, so Te Wiki o Te Reo Māori is the Māori language week, and Stan Walker released his song called Aotearoa with Maisie Rika, Troy, Kingy, and uh, Ria Hall. You've got to love your New Zealand accent. <laughs> 
Te wiki. Te wiki o te reo Māori. Can so you say, it's... turn it on? <laughs> turn it on? Turn, turn it, on. it up. <laughs> so many people are going to go on, on iTunes now yeah, trying so to find the song. Yeah, so buy that song on iTunes. It's Beautiful. called Aotearoa and it's about reconnecting Beautiful with the song. land. Wonderful. Let's have a look at the top three songs for this week, please, guys. At number three. Please don't say you love me, Gabrielle Applin. At number two. When it comes up. Oh, it's actually a good song, actually. Number two. We are done by the Madden Brothers. And uh, that's doing really well, thanks to The Voice. And, and number one. Only love can hurt like this Paloma fate. Do you love this song? I always, absolutely love Why are all the song. depressing songs very popular? Because they connect with people. That's what it's all about. Everyone's, Everyone's depressed. depressed. Oh, yeah. Oh, thanks. Jinx. you got a big week coming up? <laughs> Yes, always yeah, got a big week coming up. I better let you go and get on with it. Yeah, then. thanks, Rick. Thank you. Don't forget, turn it up. That <laughs> was Clay. That was uh, lovely, Paul. They'll be back in a couple of weeks back with music. Thank you very much. Please support them. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the dulcet tones and Paula come in and perform for us very soon as well. We'll take a break. We're going to talk to Shamim next yeah. on the couch. This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito, give it a go with Azito. Refresh Pure Water. And Reading Cinemas, experience the difference. Welcome back to The Couch here on Aurora Television and Face TV New Zealand. Thanks for watching and don't forget you can catch us online now at thecouch.com.au. Please tell all your friends and we'd love you to join up as a couchy. Now, one of my favourite things about living in West Australia, you get to promote West Australian artists. Now, this next lady is one of my favourites. I've only just met her today before when she performed and now you get to meet her as well. Please make her welcome to The Couch. Her name is Shamim. Did I get it right? Yes, you did. Give her a round of applause in the studio and me, of course, for getting it right. Thank you. No, no, but the other crew didn't want to clap. <laughs> They're on my side. Shamim, welcome to the couch and welcome to the, the show here in West Australia where you're based. Yeah, it's awesome to be here. It is a, it's great to have you here. You sang your new song before mm -hmm. called Beautiful Soul. Yes. Now, tell me a little bit about yourself because, and then we'll talk about your music. Where were you from? Where were you born? Mm -hmm. uh, where did you grow up? Yeah, so um, I was born and bred here in Perth and mm -hmm. I've lived here my whole life, basically, except for maybe nine months when I was doing some volunteer work in Alice Springs. But yeah, I'm a, I'm a Aussie girl, Perth girl through and through. Yeah. Okay. And did you always want to be a performer, a singer? Yeah, I think I did. How I, old were you when you first decided when I, first I can sing? That. Or when, when, when you decided you could sing but maybe other people thought you couldn't? Uh, well, I think no, someone else did. Uh, my music teacher How singled me out. I was in grade one and he singled me out because um, we had the senior choir was like the year sevens and sixes and he got me to sing a solo in front of the Do you remember what it was? Choir. It was Lavender's Blue. How does that go? Lavender's blue, dilly dilly, lavender's green. You know that song? How well oh, rehearsed you? How <laughs> practised do you? You, you must have had that on your mind. Oh, he's going to ask me about that. No, no. I just, well, when you said when the first per when, no, when mm. was your first thing that you could sing, and I was like, it was that one. Yeah, and I remember at that age begging my mum, please, can I have piano lessons? Please, please, please. And um, my uncle taught piano, and and he said not until she's learnt to read. So I had to wait until I was seven, mm. and I was I was like an eternity. Can you tell <laughs> me your full name as well? Because it's really interesting. Yeah. It's, go on. It's Shamim Munlay Taheri Lee. And there's a, a bit of culture there. Yeah. yeah. What is it? So Shamim is my actual first name and mm -hmm. it's um, from Iran and Manle is my Chinese name. My mm -hmm. dad is Chinese Malaysian so I am half Iranian and half Chinese Malaysian. And do they all speak really good English? Because I mean it would be yeah. really hard at home to have to sing Chinese, Malay, yeah, right. Iranian. Or yeah, do, you just, right. do you sing in multi-language or not? I wish I could. I can, I can sing a, a couple of songs in the Iranian language Farsi. Yeah, but that's... Now, that's we, we opened the show with Beautiful Soul. Is mm -hmm. that off your new album? Yeah, this is off my new album, which I haven't released yet. I'll be releasing in January. And, um, yeah, it's a new record How for long me. did that take for you to bring together? We can see some clips there. There it yeah. is. There. It's beautiful. Where did that get recorded, the clip? The, the clip was recorded um, in Leaderville. We were filmed it in Leaderville. Here. At the, here in Perth at the skate park that they have there, YMCA Skate Park. Wow. And around there. And, yeah. and is it the first time that you've done a clip? Because I know you did Turn It On. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, have you done any clips before? Yeah, because I, I did a previous... Oh, here we go. Um, this is Sleeper on the Night Train from my previous album that I put out. And it's, I put it out independently, just like I'm putting out this new album. Why do you think we've never heard of you until Turn It On? 
Yeah. What, what is happening in the, in the local industry, in the music industry? What are, what are we all doing to not, not well enough to get you out there? Um, I think it's hard because Aussie music industry is very much about indie music at the moment and about um, alternative rock at the moment and also about electro and they've sort of missed out all of the soul artists. Mm. So that's why we're having you know, challenges, I think. So um, where would you like your music to go from here? Because your new album comes out of January. Yes. We'll probably have you back before then, I would say, because be we awesome. have to have you back. But cool. where would you like it to go from here? Do you see yourself moving overseas, moving mm -hmm. over east, or just becoming big and staying in Western Australia? I'd love to stay in Western Australia, but I'd love to tour. So I'd love to tour. I mean, we're planning to tour the album when it comes out over east, and um, it'd be great to go overseas and tour overseas as well. Have you got a great team that perform with you, uh, the instrument side yeah. and all that, and do you record locally? Mm -hmm, I do. So I've got my band, and we always perform together. What's your band called? We're called Shamim. Just, oh. like, just like Sade is the lady and she's the band as Shemaine. well, you know. Tell me about the, this great song, Turn It On. Yes. Now, we know it's from Clean Heat Gas. We've seen it here in WA. It's yes. West Farmers. Mm -hmm. It's the alternative to Alinta Gas. Mm -hmm. How did you get involved with that? How was it written and is it your song? Tell mm -hmm. me about it. So, it's not actually my song. It's written by this uh, UK songwriter producer who's based in Japan. And basically, Clean Heat approached him, wanted him to write the song. He does a lot of commercial writing. But they mm. said, we don't want you to write a jingle. We want you to write a great song that could go for our company. So, how did they choose you? So, they wanted, because they're a WA company, they wanted a Perth soul singer. So I think one thing they did is they googled Perth soul singers and they found me and they also asked a couple of booking agents around town for, who had their ears on the ground, who do you think would be good and I got recommended and so they asked me to record a little demo of the song, they sent me a little recording and I recorded Now you're going to be performing that song at the end of the show with yes. your guitarist which is, give yes, him a plug. Dom, hey Dom, how's He's, over there. He's he over there. He didn't want to go on camera nah. but he will be at the end of the show performing with you again. Yes. Tell us your website and where we can get the the album, etc. Yes, so my website is www.shamimmusic.com and you spell shamim, S H A M for music, double E M for music. It's on screen right now. It's Thank on you screen. very much. There it is. Now the album is available when? Um, it'll be available in January. January. Yeah. So if people want to Google you now, they can still buy Turn It On. Can yes, they, on, on uh, they can buy Turn It On on iTunes and they can also buy Beautiful Soul. We would love you to buy both of those songs on iTunes, please. Make her successful and make her stay in Western Australia and Australia as well. You are an amazing artist. We'd love to have you back on the couch thank again you. very soon to promote it all over again. Awesome. Uh, thank you for spending some time for us and thank you for performing at the end of the show. And thanks for having me. Well done. That is, of course, Shamim. I got it right. Sounds like I'm saying Shamois, but Shamim. <laughs> And she's a great Australian talent and, she, and it's so nice to have a West Australian that we can promote as well as doing some great things. If you want more information or you missed any of the details from Shamim, this is how you do it. If you're looking for more info on anything you've seen on today's show, head to thecouch.com.au. It's where you'll find all the links for our guests, plus clips from the show, backstage photos and even exclusive movie reviews. You can also sign up as a couchie and be part of our competitions, including Spin It to Win It. New Zealand viewers, that's open to you too. So jump online and check it out now. Thecouch.com.au got to love doing local, local people, local television. That's what we do here at The Couch. Talking local, we've got a fantastic guy that knows everything there is to know about travel. And uh, he's back with us today, Steve Collins from Radio Roaming. Welcome back. Hello, Fred. Thanks very much for having me. Did you like uh, a lovely local artist that we had on the Shemaine. Yeah, she's, she's gorgeous, wonderful, isn't she? she? Yeah. I bet now you're turned on? Well, no, I, I like mean, her in a musical music. way. Really like her turn music. it up. Yeah. Oh, turn, turn it oh, that on. Would turn it on. Yeah. What, yeah, I'm glad you yeah, got the Yeah, I, well, I use a Linda, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what you use at home, you do whatever you like. Uh, let's talk Croatia. Yes, let's talk Croatia. Yeah. Let's lift the bar. Yes, that. let's talk Croatia. It's, yeah. uh, it's one of those sort of what central. Do you know? A, a Central European countries, which is on the Adriatic Sea. Do you know what? Yep. So much has been said about Croatia. Yeah. We talk about Greece, Italy, yep. Spain, all those. Yeah. Croatia is sort of like the little secret unknown place, isn't it? Well, do you know that Croatia has been uh, has been attracting tourists for about 2,000 years? Now, admittedly, some of those tourists used to go over and just plunder the country, but it's been, uh, been a tourist resort since, really, uh, since the Roman times. Diocletian, mm. uh, he was one of the Roman emperors. He built his palace there uh, in uh, in Split. Mm. And so people have been going there, and of course it was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and the royals used to go there as well for for their holidays. Uh, What's it well known for? Like, if I was to travel there, mm. what would be the reasons to go over to Croatia? Probably to go... For, 
to Croatia, of course, it's got a gorgeous coastline. Mm. It's got several parts of the coastline. It's got probably one of the best Mediterranean cities in that area, and that, of course, is Dubrovnik. I'm looking at some of the footage now. That yeah, well, that's 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 the coast. That's that's some of the beaches there. You'll notice that it's not quite no, sandy. No, it's all stone, just, isn't it? It's stone. On, the, on some of the islands, of course, it is sandy. It looks beautiful, but, but it is. It? Well, it is beautiful. They drive on the wrong side of the road as well, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but you can, you've got mountains there. Now, it's interesting when, when you talk about mountains. They've got, a, they've got an island there called Four, yeah. which is spelled H-V-A-R. All right. And I don't know how, how they get the pronunciation for but it is supposed to be one of the sunniest spots mm. in the Mediterranean. And it is so sunny that if you go there yeah. and you have, say, more than four hours of rain, they give you a discount on your hotel. Yeah. And if it snows, there's no charge. So the best time to go there is when it's snowing. Incredible. So you don't have to pay. Really? Absolutely. Okay, give us those details. So, are there any destinations in Croatia that you could recommend for us where we, we should there go? There are heaps. Look, well, first of all, let's start with Dubrovnik. Okay. Dubrovnik is a fantastic city. It's a medieval it. city. It's a walled city. There we go. That's Dubrovnik now. Uh, you can literally walk right around the city on the wall. It's small, is it? That's the market that they have. That's near what, the Francisca Monastery there. And it's a great little market that they have there. You get all sorts of things. Um, it's a very small place. You can walk. It's got it's got this wall and it's got these gates uh, pretty, around it, and you can walk really in between it very, very, very easily. If you want to go and get a, a sort of a panoramic view of it, there's a cable car that goes up uh, up to the local mountain. Oh, I have seen it. There you go. There, there it is. There. Uh, and that only, it's only about a three minute trip, so it doesn't take long. But you go up there, and there's a restaurant up there. And look at it. See, look at that. Yeah, that is beautiful. just gorgeous, isn't it? It is just. A fantastic place. A lot of cruise ships go into Dubrovnik, so a lot of people see that as sort of a, a one-day tour. Place. It's a very, very big tourist place, yeah. It's just wonderful. That's just one of the features, of course. And you've, uh, what of, else of we got? Because we've got Split as well, haven't we? Split's Split is the second largest city mm -hmm. in uh, in Croatia. It's uh, There we go, there's Split. Look at the, the some of the, uh, some is, of the boats there. Is there, there a lot of touristy it? things to do when you're in this country? There's, well, it's basically, yeah, where we're talking about on the coast, mm. um, yes, it is all touristic. Don't forget, I mean, look, Australians know a little bit about it, yeah. but really it is a very, very big destination for other Europeans. At some of the places, Split, for instance, is one of the big hubs there. You've got, you've got sea, rail, air, uh, and all sorts of uh, ways of getting underground there. Underground market. That's the underground market. That's underneath the, the, it the does Diocletian look beautiful, Palace. Doesn't it? it is. It's just fantastic. You can see there's no cars here. You walk through these streets. I don't know how we got an Aboriginal so, didgeridoo, didgeridoo player in Split, but <laughs> he was there on a cruise, obviously. Now, the coast is obviously very important to people it going is. To, to Split. Is the it coast and the islands. There's over a 1,000 islands. Now, you know, like Greece has got Santorini Island. Yeah. A lot of people don't realise that Croatia have got very similar type destinations. They have. Uh, Croatia's got, as I say, it's got about a thousand islands mm. and in different island groups. There are four main islands. One of them, which I said was, was four before, mm. that was where they, you get the discount if it snows. Uh, but there's a couple of there's Brach, which is very close to Split. Mm. Uh, it's just a short ferry ride, so that's probably the most popular of the islands there. But there are others. There's a little little place called Viz, mm -hmm. uh, which How do you is say that again? Viz, V I S, Viz. 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 Look at these creative Viz. names, Viz, Viz. Split. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm struggling with some of the Croatian Four. language. I can tell you. Uh, for I know Tula. a couple of words. For Croatian. Tula is another very popular one. No, that wasn't the for word Tula I was thinking. has got uh, has got some lovely scenery there, and it's got the town, the little town of Fortula. It's called Little Dubrovnik because it's very, very Mediterranean, very now, medieval. I believe there's some more vision of the coast and also, is, is it Istria? Istria. Istria. Are we having a look at that at Istria all? is the northern yeah. part of the coastline. There we and go. And you know what? It's, there's a lot of Italian influence there because right up until the beginning of the 20th century, it was part of Italy. And this is the thing about That's Croatia. It's been part of, I mean, it was part of Yugoslavia. It was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Mm. And so... Uh, Istria is very popular. There's a lot of a lot of people go there because it's easy to get to by train that looks or by nice, plane. Actually. I like Istria. Yeah, this is uh, the, the 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 lake system we just saw. The Plitch the Plitch Plitchvice lakes. They're very hard to say, but they're a UNESCO World Heritage Site. There's 16 of these lakes, mm. 
and they are joined. They're at different levels. They're different colours. You've got turquoise, you've got mint green, you've got grey, you've got blue, and they're connected by all these wonderful cascades and waterfalls. The highest waterfall there is 78. Wow. It's got a drop of 78 metres, Beautiful. which is incredible, amazing place. The question that bears to yes. be asked is, is it expensive and how do we get there from Australia or WA? Right, well... Firstly, depends where you go to. There are, particularly up in Istria, mm. that is the most expensive part uh, of, of the Croatian coast. It's also called the Dalmatian coast. There are, so if you go out to some of the islands, they're a bit cheaper. There are other places, like La Pula, which is near Split, uh, which are a bit cheaper because they get that they get a lot of the budget airlines mm. go there. Uh, so it depends what you want to do, where you, where you go to, how long you want to stay there, at what season you go. And have in, they changed the euro now, or they still the kruna? Do you know if the the currency is still the I same? I think the, it's still kruna. kruna. Yeah, kruna, which is always very good. And it's, if you're, you're getting quite. How much do we get? Because one of our floor man, uh, one of our six or seven kruna for the dollar. Well, that's all right. How much does a can of coke cost? How many kruna? Depends. Pretty. Four kurna. Well, that's, that's only just over wow. a dollar. That's dollar not 50. bad. Now to get there, yeah. uh, to get there, you'll have to go in a couple of hops. Okay. Um, because you can't fly direct there. You've got to, any of the major airlines that fly toward to to Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll you go to their their main hub, and from there you'll have to fly to somewhere else um, uh, to um, uh, to transfer to to, to get a, a lot flight of to one of these road places. as well, isn't it? A lot the of buses. us fly road. But the other thing, most people, most Australians tend to go there on cruise ships yep. these days. So one of the best ways to get there is if you go to Italy, yep. cruise catch across. a ferry across the Adriatic. When are we doing it? Well, what, let's go now. Is it a place you'd love to go to? Oh, absolutely. There you go, you heard fantastic. it. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic because it is, it is the true Mediterranean. The weather there, on, we're talking about the coast, yep. is really good. Fantastic. Really. That's why they say oh, if it snows, we'll give you a, we'll give you a free room. Um, but it is... Compared to a lot of the other Mediterranean ports uh, or, or places, uh, reasonably cheap. And as I say, it's just one of those places, there's so much to do there and some, a lot of history, uh, good beaches, good rocks on some of the beaches as well. Fantastic. But the interior of the country is also very interesting. Well done. Thank you very much, Steve Collins. You'll be sticking around. You're going to be on Bitchin after the break as oh, well. Oh, yeah, yeah. So Steve Collins from Radio Roaming. If you want more information, it's on screen right now, radioroaming.com. I'm getting ready for that's, it. That's I'm getting ready. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for that. I hope he stays true to his form. We'll be back with Bitchin right after this break and Steve Collins sticking around to talk more than Croatia. This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito, give it a go with Azito. Refresh Pure Water. And Reading Cinemas, experience the difference. Time for another bitchin segment here on the couch and we've got our bitches, if we can call them that. They're going to bitch for you today and tell us all different topics. I see Candice already say, you called me a bitch. No, we didn't. They're <laughs> bitching today. Let me start with a new bitch. We've got Steve Collins. Welcome yeah. from... I'm uh, obviously the biggest bitch you're, on this You're from table. our yeah. radio roaming, but you're also yep. from 6PR at times and at you're a time. producer and all that sort of thing. Yep, I am. Welcome. Yeah, I, I, I'm multimedia these days because not one media organisation will actually have me. But that's okay. <laughs> Well done. And we've got a WA Today lady here, Candace Barnes. That's Welcome. me. Thank you. Nice to be here. How's I the seem to have a new working? hat each time I <laughs> sit on the panel. Um, all very good. Good. Um, Enjoying it. feel like I'm the minister for fun when it comes to WA Today. So if it's fun, <laughs> you'll read about it. Well done. And Cameron, of course, entertainment reporter here at The Couch. Yes. And I am also from WA Today, as in I'm in WA Today. today. So. Yeah. And you're also more. a minister for fun? Uh, yes, but I left my Pella Beanie at home, unfortunately, Sweet. yes. And Ted, what can I say about what you? Can you? Radio say? Legend, what Curtin can you FM, say? Yeah, yeah. and Radio Legend, yep. ABC, I, 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 I have a collective for us. Why don't we call ourselves a batch of bitches? A batch of bitches? <laughs> a, a batch of bitches Is there a collective bitches. noun for yeah. bitches? Well, there is now. Right. We've got one. Yes. Okay. Panel. We're head, oh, panel. Yes. head bitch leader. <laughs> batch. Um, let's start over with Steve Collins, please. What's your topic today, Steve? Fear of flying. You know, we've had a couple. We've had mm. a couple of air disasters, disasters recently, and people are asking themselves, oh, "Is it safe to fly?" Well, we've only had about 65 billion people have flown since commercial 
flying was introduced uh, in about nine, 1912, I think was the first commercial flight. And when you consider the number of deaths that we have, uh, yeah, flying is still very, very safe. So why, in my why humble was opinion. this article commissioned? Is it a, the article leading towards a single, like a, a direction? Well, it, it, basically what it's saying is we should be questioning ourselves with so many air disasters in recent times. Should we, uh, should we consider whether flying is still the safest way to, uh, to transport And you travel ourselves. heaps, so you're probably one of the best people on this panel to talk about it. What do you think? Well, I reckon it's more dangerous to drive to the airport than it is to actually get on the plane. Depends who's driving the taxi, I well, would have to yeah, say. Well, yeah, some of the taxi drivers would be nice if they had licences before yes. they came to drive taxis. <laughs> it would do, do, be nice if they could speak English as well occasionally. Do you know what it is? Now, yeah. I've thought about this. It's the actual fear of how you're going to die. It's like, you know, how we feel about white pointers. The chance of getting eaten by, by a pied a, a pied pointer. A po it's a not as bad as a white pointer. I'm running the teeth in for the dogs. I'd rather be eaten by a wobbegon but a white pointer. Indeed. It'd be slower. However, I really think you sort of, when you're up there and you take off, someone else is in total control of your life. Yeah. And that's what I, I think it's you sit there and you think, what could happen? It'll take me 10 minutes to hit the ground. And I think it's the actual fear of, of how you're going to die that is what the fear is. I think I think it goes further than that. I think it's, there's a couple of things. A, you are sitting in an aluminium tube or a composite tube yeah. if you're on a 787. Uh, you aren't piloting the thing, so you don't really know what's going Isn't up Isn't it a good front. thing you're not? And not, not only <laughs> that, I think we have an, uh, humans have a natural aversion to height because mm. yeah. we don't fly normally, and I think that's part of it. Right. But really, if you look at it scientifically and if you look at it statistically, flying is still the safest way to travel. Candice, what do you think? Oh, look, um, I wouldn't have any problem flying. I think the, I mean, we've, what we've had, MH370, which has disappeared, and we're not quite sure what happened it's been to three it. In MH17, the last and then we've had the Taiwanese mm. crash, yeah. and then the one over Mali. Yeah. So, yep. in the short space of time, we've had four very high profile disasters. Well, at least three disasters and, and mm. a fourth one. We're not 100% sure yeah. what's happened there. Either way, it's a, it's a tragedy. Um, I think we're just incredibly unlucky at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, it wouldn't deter me from flying Fair at all. Enough. What about you, Ken? Well, the article is, should you be afraid of flying? And, you know, I'm afraid of Elmo when he's on TV. <laughs> but I still watch Sesame Street religiously. So the fa fact of the matter is, you can be afraid of something, but until the TARDIS becomes real, or we all want to travel via paddle steamer from A to B, yeah. I, we're going to keep flying irrespective yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, so enough. it's that's the harsh reality I, I have to say, my opinion on this, and, and I don't mean this to be in a horrible way, I know that a lot of people lost their lives and, and families have been in touch. The only thing out of all these disasters that happen, I will never fly Malaysian Airlines and I'm not blaming them for anything, clearly. I just have this omen, I'm scared to fly Malaysian Airlines. I, I, I'm sure a lot of people I, have. I wonder how long they will be there. So I'll be flying Fly Jetstar and Qantas, but that's mm. my choice. Yeah. I want to fly anything connected to Australia. However, yeah, having really said that, uh, Malaysian Airlines is actually a very, a very, very safe airline. airline. Yeah, it is, yeah. it is. Uh, MH370, you can't explain. Yeah. MH17, that was a terrorist it act. It no actually problem. had nothing to do but with the airline did, because they yeah. were flying oh, look, in I agree. prescribed airspace. I agree, oh, and I watched, that a clip. Was bad luck. I watched a clip after MH17 got yeah. downed mm. and people at the airport and they were still flying Malaysian yeah. Airlines and good luck to and, them. I yeah, hope and, they recover and, from and all And this. I just remember that, that last time that I flew and I was really concerned because I pressed the button to have a drink delivered and it d didn't arrive. <laughs> <laughs> it just shot you Sucked out of the plane. Into the I never got over it. Let's you know, move on. You know what I reckon the worst thing about flying these days is? Yeah. Plastic knife and fork mm. with the airline food because you cannot cut it. Goes everywhere. Obviously, we you need don't real cut first class, <laughs> Stephen. No, yeah, first class <laughs> that's the hint. Oh, they normally yes. put me in the dog box in the hold. Moving the on, animals. three words: yeah. powdered scrambled eggs. Yeah, lovely. Um, well, I was going to say three words. Let's move on. <laughs> Let's uh, move on. But that's good. Um, so the article I have today yeah. is uh, a very uh, a famous model in Australia and internationally. Andre Payek has now um, undergone the very difficult. Um, I'm and, sorry. And when you said famous model, I thought you were talking about the P. 76. I do apologise. Is that an aeroplane? That's a no, Chrysler, that's is a, it? A, that's a, that's you were the car. only one. I'm talking fashion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fashion. I'm okay, fashion models Candace, here. please <laughs> take us out. <laughs> Andre, Andre Payek, very famous for um, Jean-Paul Gaultier, uh, very well recognised in the international mm. industry and, and how she made her mark was that she, uh, with an androgynous look, born as mainstream society would say, it was mm. born a man. Yep. Uh, and but successfully managed to model for male wear and mm. and women's and women. wear as well. So that's that's why she became um, 
notable. Very well known, yeah. But recently, she's uh, come out that you know now wants to be referred to as Andrea Payek, which you know completely reasonable. But she's and is, a man now. Well, she's a female is now. It, she's um, a female. Sorry. Yeah, well, has always felt that she's <laughs> okay. a female, but um, but she legally is recognised as such. Had a sex change. Right, and as a result, is now mm. no longer doing the the menswear campaigns. Oh, shame. Is oh, it's terrible. Well, as, I mean, more power to someone who looks beautiful as a man yeah, and beautiful exactly. as a woman. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I can, I can it's a wonderful her, problem to have. Yeah. <laughs> What's your opinion on that? I mean, really, good luck to her. Yeah. Well, the thing that I thought was, was most interesting about it is while um, the fashion industry doesn't seem to be all that accepting of different body shapes or, or at some, in some points, <gasps> ethnicities, <What? laughs> uh, the fashion Shock. industry, to its credit, is very seems very accepting of, uh, of you know, not following gender norms or sexuality. They like right, so they, they, they embrace people but, 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 as hey, they are. Surely modelling clothes has nothing to do with the body. No. It's it's the clothes that are being but, modelled. But, but would you buy heads? clothes for idea. a man modelled by a woman? Yeah, of course I would. I don't care. Oh, well, that's good. Bother me. If they look good on you, that's all that matters, <laughs> right? I've got a lovely yeah. dress you might like to all slip right. into look, after look, the look, show. Look, I think a little simple black frock yeah. with pearls, understated, I perfect for Friday night fun night. Yeah, You look great. I thought I did too. You complimented me. Well, I was upset. I thought, well, once again, he's he's upstaged me. That wouldn't be hard with my legs. When I buy Dull, clothes, it's Dull. very easy. It's the legs. I told him it's the legs, Steve. When I buy clothes, it's very easy. My size is SM, small marquee, so I just go to a tent <laughs> shop. Thank you very much. I was going to say Tent City sponsored me, but <laughs> yeah. that's fine. Candice, anything else you want to add with this one um, before we totally destroy that's, it? That's basically it. Uh, I think it's, it's a wonderful thing that there's a lot of support for people who, uh, you know, yeah. aren't... aren't well done. Are, are going through journeys like that yeah. and, and need the support of the people I around think them. good on them and I hope their families support them. And as a society, I think we should all support. If you know what, what you want to be, you are a female, you are a male. If you that's are who you say you but are. But isn't it amazing? With medicine these days, if you do have those feelings that you are mm. male yeah, and yeah. feel yeah. female, they have the technology and they have the science to, to do wish. it these days, yeah. if you wish mm. to do it. In this case, If you were born two centuries ago or even a century ago, exactly. that would not have happened. You would exactly. have been upset your whole life. In this Can case, Andrea was able to start her journey at, at age 13 by oh, having wow. the, the sort of hormone blockers. Wow. And congratulations. Which is, you know, very... There's the foresight of And the... obviously she had the family support too, because a lot of families are usually the ones... Incredibly, incredibly important. Yeah. Fair enough. Let's go to Cameron. Cameron, we've got five minutes. Let's keep going, because we've tend to talk to her again. Excellent. <laughs> Well, um, you know, humanity's seen their fair share of monsters. We've got Stalin, Hitler, Bin Laden, but there's a new sheriff in town. His name's Gluten. So be careful because <laughs> this is taking the world by storm. Basically, now I'm going to preface this with anyone who has now adopted a gluten-free diet. I have no problem with you, especially if you have celiac disease because I don't want letters because mm. they're messy. Um, but yes, I don't mind it. But the thing is that when you start talking about it and publicizing it as your main conversational piece at a party, you might need to reassess that. And that's what I think this article is about. Basically, like people who are so inherently dull that their only thing they can really talk about is their diet. And this kind of extends to that Kaleo Paleo thing mm. they're doing oh, and stuff yeah. like that as paleo well. Diet. Oh, you really and you know go, a lot about this. I know, right? Well, it's kind of, you just <laughs> open anything up. Any like, of these trendy diets. Yeah, exactly, yeah, any of these trendy diets. Diet. Yeah. So diet. But there's these bloggers out there with their Kaleo Paleo diets, like just brown stuff stacked on top of more brown stuff. And I haven't seen brown Cardboard. stuff stacked on top of that much brown stuff since Tony Abbott and Joe Hockey went on spring break <laughs> and they sat on the top of each other's shoulders. But Smoking that, a cigar. Yeah, but the thing is, people who like, oh, I've gotten a gluten allergy, but they drink beer or you know or they watch the view or dr oz or any of this other crap like honestly give it a rest no one cares what you do or do put, don't put in your mouth and what comes out the other end you know, just get a hobby become interesting that's and what here saying. i am yeah. i don't know about you steve but i only eat whatever's on special but i mean <laughs> I, only eat whatever's I'm on the I go with yes. the flow <laughs> yeah. well, can i ask ted we'll start with you this time okay what, what, what do, do i think? think well i think there's nothing like mutton yep. as jerry yep. seinfeld once said yep. and there's nothing like loot and gluten. okay but nothing more like it look, look but look see that's how people's conversation it's your hair. Yes. Look at that. All you need is a little moustache and you'll be able to. Oh, <laughs> gluten free hair. Uh, Look absolutely. at that. It is, yeah, that's <laughs> gluten free <laughs> hair. <laughs> See? <laughs> See, the discussion's so boring, we actually moved. Yeah, yeah, sorry, else. sorry, I hadn't noticed it before. Yeah, no, no I've, I'm, I'm, I've had my say. That's it. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Candace, uh, do you have a view on this? I think. Anyone who feels they have a gluten allergy really needs to go and get themselves a solid diagnosis before self-diagnosing and going down the, the gluten-free route. Uh, the other thing is, I, I, I certainly take Cameron's point, if you do have a, a lifestyle diet, mm. there's no need to be selling this to everyone else. Is there a difference between a gluten and a glutton? Oh. Oh. You can't well, be a glutton for gluten. Gluten-free yeah. doesn't necessarily mean healthy. That's Absolutely. it. Thank you for yes. saying that because mm. I wanted someone to say that because mm. I've seen some gluten-free people eating worse than I do. Yes. Right. Not that I eat badly.
Steve, did you want to say anything else quickly before we go? Oh, to just that I'm, I'm, I'm annoyed with Cameron because he's dissing my favourite food, the alfalfa sprout. I'm sorry, oh, but sorry, there sorry. is room for it. And it goes detachment. with everything, doesn't yes. it? Like Sam. I, uh, <laughs> what have you got for well, us? Well, I really hope that, that it's been all gluten free stuff that's turned up to Prince George for his mm. birthday. Oh, just yeah. in case, yeah, yeah, just in case that he may have to get you know, that, that epi pen. But yeah. <laughs> all, all, all jokes aside, I find it. Wonderful how the royals have said, no presents, thank you very much. Prince George has got over 4,000, including a crocodile and old bull, talking about old bulls, <laughs> and, and an old goat, mm. talking about old goats, uh, that well, he's been given. Is this for his given. first birthday, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, see, the royals are smart. They're saying, oh, no, we're going to give all these gifts to uh, children's charity. But, ah, I bet they've hung on to all the good stuff. I bet, I, bet, I bet all the stuff with E2R written on it, the great granny has given them, you know, there's no way they'd give that. Do you re-gift? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the world would be a gift. Yes! <laughs> well, here's a crocodile. I don't need right. it. Ever, but say, isn't, isn't Zara up the duff at the moment? Or one, one of the other royals? I love your choice yeah. of words. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do, do you guys But she's right. Yeah. She's right. One of the other royals. Which one's that? One, one of the cousins I'm or something? I'm all embarrassed. It's definitely not Anne. One of the cousins I, I, is expecting. I don't, I don't think, no, expecting. We're talking royals here. Is it Anne? Anne. <laughs> Princess Anne, maybe. We're all biologically she, she, the same. She is with child. With child. Okay. With royal child. So can I ask the question of the panel? <laughs> do you think with the, the royals travelling all around the world, they get given gifts everywhere? Do you reckon they keep them? Well, I Honestly. want to know, do they fit them all in the... Uh, the, the overhead, little, the 10 kilo thing? The 10 kilo oh. thing up top. Seven kilos oh. up top. I want to know. I bet you they How would you put a, a crocodile in that thing? For I reckon, very carefully. I reckon they're a Qantas Club member. Oh, probably get extra so, luggage. Yeah. Why do the Royals have like an Air Force One thing that they, they fly do, around? They, they do, don't they? They do. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's got British a fancy Airways. name. Is it, is it powered by the children just throwing them the fire? They've got the British Airways plane. No, I think they're just travelling normal first class. They do, yeah. Just normal first class. Well, the Queen's different, I think. Anything but else we want? Just quickly, can we touch oh, on that? Well, shut Sorry, up. No, 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 go on, go on. What were you going to no, say? No, I'm not. I'm just going to I thought you'd here. finish, but we're going to talk about the Fifi one. Just Fifi quickly. Box. Oh, Fifi box. Just quickly. Uh, online and hatred we'll with and is very, very warranted. Uh, she's been what faking she a disability. Oh, um, she she pretended uh, she parked in a, no, in a disabled parking spot at 6 a.m. with no other people in the car, car park. People saw her park there. She came back and... So she actually did this. She faked a limp to, she, uh, to try to get away with it. She said she didn't know. She said she didn't see the parking. Stupid or liar. Yeah. Well, Six you, o'clock in the morning reckon? on a Sunday. With no other spaces. What's there? happening to radio people these days? What's they need to make yes, it, I, I, they're, yeah. they're on they're well, the, the public eye. They, they've got plenty of money because okay. I know how much radio people get paid. Yeah. Oh, Trust me, it's, it's a lot of yeah. money. They I, live really look, well. Look, okay, okay. Look, I'm going to make this ad admission here yep. on 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 the show. I, I have actually parked in a pram only parking. Oh. Spot I've done the same without a pram. At Mirabuka. Oh, that's terrible. So that's the person. You were next to me. <laughs> I did yeah. get molested and beaten up, of course, by yeah, Mirror Booker. But well, I can have a Mirror Booker at the best of times. So no, look, I, I don't know. I, what do you reckon? Candice, you want to take a... I, I will avoid parking in a Parents of France spot yeah. if there is another spot available. But if there are no yeah, spots like available, then I would... Uh, if, if the only choices were, and I had to be at this location, if I had to choose a disabled one or a parent with pram one, I'd, I'd choose the parent with pram yeah. one. Yes. Thank you, Steve. I park away as far from everyone else as I can because I don't like people who open their Red car doors go bang. And so we? I like to find vacant spots. Uh, I don't know what this woman's still doing on radio. I think she's absolutely horrible. Ooh. I do find it quite funny that her daughter's name's Trixie Box, <laughs> yeah. uh, which spooner That's a disability box itself. of tricks. Absolutely, yeah. yes. She could probably use that as a disability and park there. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much, Steve Collins. <laughs> as always, a pleasure. RadioRoaming.com. Thank you very much to Candice nice Barnes to from wa.today.com.au, where That's you can us. catch all her stories. Uh, Cameron Lynch, of course, from the couch you'll catch him next week it's good to and have it when Ted you got Bull, it. <laughs> thank you very much from Curtin FM it's breakfast cool. on cool. Saturdays yes and Fridays and Fridays too and a lot of people love you on breakfast oh, that's nice. especially the other radio announcers that take over after you <laughs> I've heard them they say you're wonderful thank you very much to everybody oh, for you. being part of Bitch and we'll catch up with you right after the break for more couch we're doing some spin it to win it next This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito, give it a go with Azito. Refresh Pure Water. And Reading Cinemas, experience the difference. It's time to play Spin It To Win It. Proudly supported by Azito, give it a go with Azito. 
That's right, thanks to Azito, the Spin It to Win It game is back here on the couch and you can be part of it just by becoming a couch and we'll pick random people. Now today I picked a wonderful lady that lives in Gingin in Queensland. Her name is uh, Sylvia Markey, are you there? Yes, I am. Sorry. Hello, Sylvia. Now, whereabouts in Queensland is Gingin? It's on the Bruce Highway, the Bruce west, Highway. Of Fun, west of Bundaberg. Yep. And yeah, I'm about 10 kilometres away from there. And what do you do? What do you do in Gingin? Uh, I'm actually a pensioner. You're retired? Yeah. And have you watched The Couch before? Yes. And many do you... years. Oh, that's great to know. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to spin the wheel for you tonight and hopefully you win a great appliance or great uh, tool. Are you very handy around the house fixing things up? Oh, there's always plenty to do where I am. <laughs> oh, well done. All right, well, do you want to know what you're playing for today? Would you like to know what you're playing for? I think you do. Let's uh, have a look at what you're playing for today. On the wheel tonight, you could win one of these fantastic prizes. A random orbital sander. With a powerful variable speed 450 watt motor, soft grip handle and dust bag, it makes the toughest sanding jobs a breeze. Or how about a rotary tool? Use it for engraving, cutting, drilling, buffing, grinding or sanding. Its ergonomic design and the supplied 42 piece kit make it suitable for most applications. It's an electric engraver. Make your mark on your valuables with this electric engraver. Suitable for engraving a wide variety of materials, including metal, aluminium, plastics and brass. Or how about a multi-function tool? It allows sanding, cutting and chiselling operations in timber, plasterboard, particle board and thin metal in and around the home. All with the one tool. It's a DIYer's must-have. It's an electric pole hedge trimmer. With a 12 position swiveling head and a 2.3 metre reach, shaping those hedges will be a breeze. It's a garden collection cart. Cleaning the backyard will be easy with this garden collection cart. Its 160 litre capacity and removable scoop make it the perfect gardening companion. And at the end of the day, it folds flat for compact storage. Or a buffer polisher. It can be used for cars, boats, granite, marble and stainless steel surfaces. With its random orbital action, it achieves an excellent finish without the swirl marks. Any one of these prizes could be yours when you spin it to win it. Sylvia, 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 some great items on the wheel today. Yes. Okay, S Sylvia, I've got seven numbers in front of me. Can you yeah. pick a number between one and seven that you would like it to land on? Five. Okay, we'll start on five. If it stops on five, Sylvia, not only will you win the prize that you'll get, but you'll get all the prizes on the wheel. Oh, dear. <laughs> so you need to say big spin like they say on Wheel of Fortune. Do you want to say it? Wheel of Fortune, big spin. Oh, well, you didn't have to say Wheel of Fortune, but that's okay. Here I am, I'm going to spin for you. This is for Sylvia Markey of Gingin in Queensland, which is next to Bundaberg. Now, she's picked number five, folks. Let's see where it lands. Number five is where she picked. Oh, I'm pretty good at spinning. Sylvia's still going around, Sylvia. Can you hear that on the phone, Sylvia? Yes, I can hear the rattling. Good. Here we go, Sylvia. It's going to be... It may stop on number five, Sylvia. It may not. Do you know what? Oh, you're going to kill me, Sylvia. It's landed on number six. And it just about went to five and stayed on number six, Sylvia. But number six is a good prize. You've got... They yes, you've got... Are. Yeah, they all are. But you've won yourself an electric pole hedge trimmer. Have you got a bit of grass at home? Yes, I've got plenty to cut here. Beautiful. But you know what I'm going to also give you? I'm actually going to give you two Reading's Cinema tickets as well. So you can go and watch whatever you like. Because I know Bundaberg, you've got your own yeah, Reading's there. Yeah, I'm Bundaberg, yes. There you go. Are they very far from you? Oh, it's about 40 kilometres. Oh, that's okay. It's worth doing it. Go and watch a great yeah. movie. We're going to send those out to you, Sylvia, as well as your prize. Thank you for being part of the wheel today. Thank you, Fred. Thank uh, you. And Thank you for watching the show. Thank you, thank you, Aurora. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. There you go. If you want to be like Sylvia and be part of the wheel, this is how you do it. If you'd like to be a contestant on Spin It to Win It, all you have to do is head to thecouch.com.au. That's thecouch.com.au. Sign up as a couchie and you'll automatically be registered to play. Back to you, Freddie.
Oh, how exciting. Bundaberg. I've been there and it's an awesome place. They've got this thing called the Bundaberg Bear. I can't remember the alcohol that, that comes from Bundaberg. Is anyone, Bundaberg Rum, that's the one. Thank you. I thought Leroy would know, but he didn't. So I was left there. Anyway, next week we've got another home contestant. His name is Ben Williams and he'll be coming in. He's from Mandurah and we look forward to having Ben right here to play with us on the wheel. But don't forget, become a couch and you could be on the wheel as well and win some great prizes like Sylvia and hopefully Ben next week. That is it for the show this week, folks. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly have bringing it to you. We're going to go out with a lady that uh, made this song very famous for a clean heat gas commercial. It was, of course, uh, the lady we had at the beginning of the show. She's back centre stage. Her name is Shamine and the song is Turn It On. See you next week, Australia. Bye. of The Couch is proudly supported by Cafe Bella Vista Restaurant and Pizzeria. Azito, give it a go with Azito. Refresh Pure Water. And Reading Cinemas, experience the difference.